Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and this is tutorial number 30 in our series of beginners Java tutorials and this tutorial is on classes in Java and it's also going to be a little bit about object-oriented programming in general. So I've got a project in Eclipse as usual and I'm going to show you the first step um, again which by now I usually don't show you in the tutorials but I'm gonna just go to file new class and I give my class a name and I give it a main method by ticking this box and I click finish and the reason I wanted to show you that was just to remind you that you're already creating classes in Java because unless you're using some really strange editor that um, some kind of university course has saddled you with, then you will al already be creating classes to run your Java programs. So you know how to create a class in Eclipse. You go to New, you can right click on Project as well and go to New Class and just give it a name which the first letter should be uppercase and um, if you have more than one words making up the class name, you know like, I, d I don't know, um, Red Fruit, you'd capitalize the first letter of each word in the name just to make it easy to read like that. So this would be a class and of course you only need a main method for your for the first for just one class in your program and this is where your program runs from. So this is what a class normally looks like and um, it's really important to notice that if you have a, a class that's declared public um, then this class name must match the name of your file, like redfruit, the redfruit class must be in redfruit.java. But anyway, um, you're probably wondering what is public and what is a class. Well, what I'm going to do um, to kind of make things a bit simpler is, you don't normally do this, but um, although you can only have one public class in your file, you can have as many non-public classes as you like. So I'm going to just create a class here um, in my main kind of class file just to show you so then you can see everything on one page. So to create a class you type class and Java keywords are always lowercase and you give it a name as I said and I'll call this person. So the idea behind a class is a class is a template for creating objects or a class is a blueprint if you like for creating objects and what objects are is well in the real world everything is um, an object arguably like you're an object your cat is an object your computer is an object and so on um, and it's the same in a Java program everything is an object and you need some way of specifying uh, what the different objects in your program are like and that's what a class does it's just so like for example uh, a person class could be used to create person objects that would represent particular people but this isn't a particular person it's just going to represent the idea of a person in general so another way of looking at it is, is that a class is also a bit like a type like you, we've seen int and double and string and you can create your own types to order. So this is a person type. And what I'm going to do is, well, um, a class and uh, for that matter objects have two kinds of things in them. So um, classes can contain, the first thing is data, which um, repre represents the state of your objects. And what I mean by that is, um, uh, if you think about yourself as an object, you have a state you have a, um, a name, uh, probably an address, you have an age, a location, uh, you have a mood, you have a certain heart rate, all of these things are, they make up what we call your state. They are how you are at the moment. And to represent that in Java, we put data into our class in the form of what we call instance variables, which I'm going to show you in this tutorial. But, um, and in the next tutorial we'll also look at um, subroutines which can be part of classes. So like here is a subroutine. 
the main method. And in here you can type just things, commands that are executed one after the other. So your Java program starts wherever you declare main and it just works through your commands in main one after the other as you already as you already know. And um, so this is actually an example of a subroutine called main which is part of this class app. And a subroutine that's part of a class we call a method in Java to use the lingo. So this is a the main method. I'm going to show you how that works in the next tutorial. But in this tutorial, we're just going to look at the data part of classes. So I'm just going to finish typing here. So the second thing you can have in a class is a subroutine, which you call methods. OK, so um, let's have some data in this person class. So um, I'll have some um, data and we call the data in a class instance variables, data or state. Um, and uh, the reason for that is to, to represent data that you want to attach to an object. It's, it's really simple. You just type variables here, like I could have string name so that this person, so that people that I create from this person class can have names. And um, for example, they could have um, an age. And in my main program now, I can use this person class to create particular person objects or particular people, if you like. So I could say person, um, I'll give it a name, person1, I'll say. When I say give it a name, I mean give the variable that refers to the person a name. Uh, I don't mean this. So person1 equals, and I have to say new person. So what's happening here is, here I'm declaring a variable of type person. I'm, in other words, it's a variable that can refer to a person object. And here I'm creating a particular person. I'm creating a, a person object, an object of type person. And now I can refer to the name and age of this person. I can say um, person1.name equals, let's say, Joe... Joe blogs and person one dot age equals um, thirty seven and um, I could have another person I could say person person two have as many as you like of course equals new person um, and when you create the person object using new don't forget you need these two round brackets here so to break this down um, once more. Here's the type of the variable that I'm going to create. Here's a name for my variable. And then I'm going to set the variable equal, whoops, I'm going to set it equal using this equal sign to a new person object, which I'm creating here. And to do that, you just have the keyword new, the name, the name of your class, and then two round brackets here, which are very important, so don't forget them. And I can give person two, I can assign a value to its um, name as well. I like, say Sarah Smith and person one dot age equals twenty. Oh, sorry, person two dot age equals twenty. So you can see um, that I'm accessing these variables up here just by using a dot after the person, after the variable name, the name of the variable that refers to the person. So it's the variable name which I chose here then a dot, and there's no spaces, and then just the name of the variable that I want to refer to. Um, and uh, this actually isn't best practice in Java, but what I'd strongly recommend is, because by now if you haven't seen this before, probably your brain is bubbling out of your ears, uh, I'd recommend just typing this stuff out for yourself. Just create a few classes. Um, you can just create them one after the other here, above your main class, and give them some data, and then just create a few objects from your classes here, like this, and play about with the data. And of course you can access the data using the dot notation in exactly the same way, person1.name for example. And all this um, is actually very simple and if it looks complicated, believe me, then after practicing a, a little bit it will seem dead simple. So that's all for this tutorial 
and uh, a lot of information to absorb but really it boils down to some quite simple code as you can see and in the next tutorial um, we're going to look at probably subroutines um, that you can have in classes um, and in, in other words we're going to look at what we call methods of which this main method here is an example so um, yeah I strongly recommend just typing this out because um, if you don't practice what will happen is when you get onto methods you'll start confusing methods with variables uh, which I've seen many people do and uh, then you won't know A from B but if you can just practice this a little bit the next bit will be a lot clearer I promise okay so have fun with that and um, you can find this code on caveofprogramming.com and please watch the next tutorial too if this is useful and until then happy coding